The focal mechanisms of earthquakes are the principal ways in which we can demonstrate the kinematics of active faults. But we can use the same type of display, these beach balls, to display the kinematics of ancient faults that we see preserved in the geological record. And we're going to do this using the stereographic projection. So what we'll need to do is to have the orientation of the fault plane, in other words, its strike and dip, an indication of its movement axis, which normally will be betrayed by striations, and we'll measure these with a pitch on the plane or as a plunge. And we also need to have an idea of the movement sense on the fault. So for dip-slip faults, whether they're normal or thrust sense, or the sense of movement for strike-slip faults as being right lateral or left lateral. And we're going to do this using four examples. So let's look at these in turn. Example one is a thrust fault with that orientation of the strike of 288, a dip of 30 degrees north, and striations that plunge 30 degrees towards a direction of 028. So the first thing we're going to do is plot these data. So let's put the tracing paper on top and mark the north direction so we know where we are. And we'll find the strike orientation of a bearing 288 around from north. Spin that round so that it lies on top of the tracing circles and select the curve that represents a dip of 30 degrees and trace it on. Notice that we pick the curve that is arching towards the north arrow. So the dip direction is north. We can check that by spinning everything round so that the curves arch round to the north with the north arrow back in place. Now let's put on the striation, which has a plunge towards the direction 028. So there's 028. Let's spin everything around so that our bearing of 028 sits on a vertical great circle. We now count in the plunge amount of 30 degrees and mark it with that red dot. And it sits on the great circle that represents the fault plane. The next thing we need to do is to plot the so-called auxiliary plane, if this was an earthquake. This plane will be the plane whose pole is the movement axis of the fault. In other words, that striation. So let's spin everything around so that the striation sits opposite an array of great circles. Here they all are. Which one of these great circles will have as its pole the striation? So we count in 90 degrees, and it's this great circle here that represents the so-called auxiliary plane. So we've now established the general shape of our beach ball. Spin it around so that north arrow is lined up. And the next question we have to sort out is which of these quadrants is in compression? What we can do now is move away from the staring net and sketch a cartoon to show the geometry. And we'll do this by imagining looking side on to our fault system. So we're looking side on, that's the land surface at the top. We can draw on our thrust fault and add the kinematics on that to show it as a thrust fault. In other words, the hanging wall is moving up relative to the foot wall. Now, what we're going to do is imagine looking into this fault system. So we're going to draw a cross section through the sphere that is represented by the stereographic projection. And that projection is represented by the circle. And now let's draw in the auxiliary plane, which is orthogonal to the fault. So now we have divided our diagram up into quadrants. Now look at the sense of movement and we can now see which of these quadrants is in compression. Here and here. So these are the ones we'd shade in. They're the ones at the top and bottom of the profile in here. How are these going to be displayed on the stereographic projection? Well, our stereographic projections are lower hemisphere. So we only need to worry about the lower half of this circle, which is why I've shaded in the quadrant harder on this side of the diagram. So we can divide up the edge of our circle there into three domains in the profile. The outer two are dilatational, the middle one is compressional. So if you imagine looking down on this system, the middle part of the diagram would be in compression, 
the outer two would be dilatational. Let's take this back to our stereographic projection and we look down on the system and the area now we've marked with an X is in compression. So let's just color that in. So this is the representation of our thrust fork, a compressional domain in the middle. There's a little tiny one out on the edge towards the bearing 288 and two dilatational quadrants, top and bottom of the diagram, in other words, north and south. So that's our representation of the thrust fault. Let's move on to our second example. And our second example is a normal fault with a strike of 314 and a dip of 64 towards the northeast. And we're going to look at striations that this time we've recorded as a pitch. And the pitch of these striations is 72 degrees towards the northwest end of the strike. So let's draw on our fault plane with a great circle. There we can see it's got a strike of 316. And we've counted in to find the great circle that represents a dip of 64 degrees, and it's towards the northeast. Now, from the northwest end, in other words, where it says 316 of the strike symbol, we count in 72 degrees to here, and that is where the striation plots on the great circle of the fault plane. Spin everything around just to make sure it's working right. So we can see that our fault plane is arching over there towards the northeast quadrant. So that's right, we've got it plotting on the right side. Our striation, we've counted in from the northwest end of the strike of the great circle. So now we need to find the plane whose pole is the striation. So we've swung the striation round. So it sits opposite all those great circles. We count in 90 degrees across from the striation to identify the great circle we're interested in and draw it on. So that represents the auxiliary plane. Spin entering back round so north is aligned back up again. So now we've plotted our fault, found its auxiliary plane equivalent. Now we just have to decide which quadrants are in compression. So again, let's think about this looking side on and sketch the geometry. So here's the land surface, here's our normal fault. So it has that sense of movement hanging wall down. And as before, as we did with the thrust fault, let's just sketch up our visualization of a profile through the sphere. Draw on our auxiliary plane, which is perpendicular to the fault plane. And now think about which quadrants go into compression, given that sense of movement. And they're these ones here. So the lower hemisphere has compression on the outsides of it and dilatation in the middle part of our sphere. Go back to the stereographic projection. And so the outer parts of the areas that are in compression, the inner part we leave clear, and that is the dilatational component. So that's how that normal fault plots up. Let's move on to now example three. Example three is a strike slip fault. It has an orientation as a fault plane with a strike of 070 and a dip of 80 degrees south, so it's a pretty steep fault. And the striations on this fault plane pitch 08 degrees from the western end of our strike. And the center movement on the fault is right lateral. So again, let's plot the fault orientation. Find the bearing 070, which is its strike. Whiz it around so it overlies the tracing circles. Choose the correct great circle that represents a dip of 80 south, and it's this one here. We can now put on the striation by coming in from the western end, which in this orientation is coming in from the bottom of the diagram, and we come in 8 degrees and mark the striation on there. Let's spin it around to have a look. So there's our fault plane arching ever so slightly, because it's almost vertical, down towards the southern part of the steering net, so that's correct and our striation coming in from the western end, just a little bit because the pitch is only eight degrees. Okay, so let's plot the auxiliary plane. So pop the striation back so it's opposite some great circles. Choose the great circle that's 90 degrees from this striation. It's this one here. So again, we divided our plot into quadrants, spin it back round again to north. Well, because this is a strike slip falls and the striation is almost horizontal, 
we don't have to draw this looking side on because the vertical view is effectively a side on view onto the kinematics of the fault. It's a right lateral fault like this. And so the two quadrants, the northeastern one and the southwestern ones, are the ones that are in compression. So these are the ones we shade in. So there's our representation of this particular strike slip fault zone. Finally, let's look at another example, which is a normal fault, which has a fault plane orientation with a strike of 020 and a dip of 64 degrees towards the east. And upon this fault plane, there are striations that pitch with this intermediate or oblique slip orientation with a pitch of 58 degrees from the southern end of the strike symbol. So let's plot these. There's the bearing 020, spin it around, draw on our great circle that represents a dip of 64 degrees down towards the eastern quadrant. And now we can put on the striation as a pitch by counting in from the southern end of this great circle. And it's there. Let's whiz it back round again to have a look. So we can quickly check this. Our great circle representing the fault plane does indeed swing round so it's dipping towards the eastern side of the stereo net. And our striation we have indeed measured in from the southern end with a pitch of 58 degrees. So now let's plot the auxiliary plane again. So again we put the striation around so it's sitting opposite some great circles. We count the 90 degrees out from that striation and draw the great circle in, and that is the auxiliary plane. Let's spin it all back round again. So now we just have to decide which of these quadrants are in contraction. Well, it's a normal fault. So therefore, the outer parts of this system are the quadrants that are in compression, and the middle bits will leave unshaded because those are in dilatation. So that's how this particular fault, with its particular kinematics, would plot as a focal mechanism. So we just rather quickly work through four examples of plotting faults as focal mechanisms. It's quite a useful way of visualising fault kinematics. Unlike earthquakes, we know the orientation of the fault plane, we know through the striation, its movement axis, and if we can match offsets across the fault plane, we know the sense of movement. So this is a tool for visualising the kinematics of faults. We need to have measurements of the orientation of the fault plane as a strike, dip and dip direction, the slip axis betrayed by the striations, which we record as a pitch or as a plunge, and we need to know the movement sense of the fault. Put those together and this is what we can do.